All right, everyone, welcome back to another time lapse construction. So, for this one, we've got the yards done, and now we are finally starting on the main line. So, I recorded this like a month and a half ago, and I've gotten through that. I'm all the way around to the sightings, and as you saw in the last, latest layout update, I'm basically too under the table, so this is technically old footage, but it's the next one I did. Uh, so what I did was, this I was going to connect this up to the, well, this is the old cork, because I had it going through the curb turnout, around, and then this was from the beginning when I was going to have the engine terminal where the yard is, and then the main line and a siding right up against the edge, and then connections to the turntable. Well, the engine facility moved to the other side of the tracks because I realized I needed the yard space, which meant the main line moved in, which meant I was down to an 18 radius. Uh, and then I was going to connect it up to the uh, inner, to the switch lead on the other side, which at this point Well, you'll see it. There we go. I was going to connect it to the inner switch lead right there. And then I realized that was a good idea because I want to be able to run everything. And at that point, the, the freight yard wasn't as operationally reliable as the rest of it. It's a lot better now with the Pico turnouts. But you go through the inner part of the Pico medium radius which is like okay, 21 or 20 so when I'm running my SD78 so my passenger cars and eventually hopefully at some point down the road some auto racks that's just I'm like no that's just too that's too much variation way too sharp that just ain't gonna work so I moved it to the outside and basically what I did was I took these sections of 18 radius uh, I laid them on there, pinned them down as you'll see me doing here, marked the center lines on the foam, uh, peeled up the track back to the straight line, and then laid the new stuff. And the reason for the two lines, I'll just throw this in here, where you see the hole in the piece of hardboard up at the top of the screen, that's the top edge, and originally I was going to have the backdrop curve and go off to the right there and come right up to that corner. So that gap between the two lines that are cut in the foam, that would be hidden between the two backdrop pieces. Well, we changed that, which was a good thing, but, so we changed it, so that's what the two lines are for. So, the heel, the backdrop follows a straight line. But anyways, back to the time lapse. So, now uh, you see I've test fitted it right here. I just cut the cork and then well okay now I'm marking the rest of it uh, getting it pinned making sure there's no gaps between the sections all the joints are nice and tight and I see I'm going through with the sharpie and marking everything which it was tedious but it wasn't as tedious as going back and trimming all the ties because there was well in the real thing you had the engine terminal you had the main line and across from it you had a Y that went up uh, the what was it? The Straitsville branch. The Straitsville branch actually went out from uh, Logan up and over the land to uh, New Straitsville. It was the Monday Creek that went out of Nelsonville, and it had a connection to Lancaster. Well, to make a long story short, real history: the Lancaster branch was torn out to the connection with the Monday Creek branch about 1930 and then it was that connection they used to get the land to uh, New Straitsville not Lancaster, New Straitsville until they closed down that branch in like 33 so uh, my world it's for the fun of it it's a continuous run connection but during op sessions it doesn't exist uh, it's basically going to be a storage track was the plan so cinder covered and kind of half buried and just really ratty looking. 
Uh, you'll see later there'll be a little jump in the footage and you'll see all the tires are spaced out and everything and just looking beat up and ratty. So they're kind of sporadically and it gives it that worn out, abandoned spur look. Which also in reality, what's left of the Y track and the branch on the on on the prototype, they still have a couple industries off of it. I have a hunch that's where the General Electric plant and maybe Heritage Furniture were located. I don't know, there were spurs right around the depot and the engine terminal, so I can't verify that, but whatever. I had to change the location anyway for the layout, so that works. And right here you can see me marking the edge of the turnout, and then I cut the cork and finish fitting it. So. Uh, and then you also see I use a straight edge, and I'm getting into it here to mark the straight route. And at this point, the section of cork right below where I marked the turnout location, that is the old cork because the main line went through the interlocking and then it had to kink again, curve to the right again to help it fit. So that cork gets moved, and you'll see that here too. But. Uh, anyways, I am going to stop talking because that's well half the video, so yeah. I hope everyone enjoys the time lapse. Hope you all enjoy the music. Thank you for watching Goose in the Caboose Productions. Uh, and again, quick reminder, novel on fanfiction.net as well as railroad photography pictures on my Google Plus page and my Pinterest page, which is where I get a lot of the stuff for pictures I use at the end of this. So, And also don't forget, I do plan on being at the National Train Show in Kansas City at the end of the NMRA National Convention. I will have a video on that as far as times and everything. Uh, keep that in mind because I would love to meet you guys there. Especially if, oh, Sparky107107, Railfan220, uh, and Kim Pat. Well, I don't know if Kim watching this, but anyway, Sparky, if you're watching this and you uh, head on down to the thing, let, shoot me a comment. I would love to meet you in person. And anyone else. But, yeah, as always, enjoy the rest of the video. And th God bless, and thank you so much for watching.